Good evening. Welcome to Tea Time with Ilana. Uh, tonight, I want to talk about Christmas. It's Christmas Eve, and I want to get started on this earlier than this. Uh, <clears throat> but, so, uh, let's get started. Uh, I want to come from the book of Enoch. A lot of people don't like to read from anything other than the Bible. But Enoch is mentioned in the Bible. And I'm just going to read from Genesis 5 and 21. And Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begot Methuselah. 300 years and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years. And Enoch walked with God. And he was not, for God took him. So people believe that uh, Enoch just got raised up on him. Chariot of fire. And was taken to heaven alive. And... Uh, I'm reading from the book of Enoch, chapters 1 through 68. And this is Enoch's actual journey before God took him. Um, in, this, in this biblical scripture, it's talking about Enoch going to heaven. His uh, two angels came and got him and took him to heaven. And he got a tour of heaven. So these are some of the things that he saw when he was there. And what I'm going to be showing you is the constellation of the stars and how they tell a story. Okay. So I'm going to start in chapter 21 of the book of Enoch, verse 7. And I saw the eighth heaven, which is called in Hebrew tongue, Muzalah. Changer of the seasons, of drought and of wet and of twelve constellations, <clears throat> of the circle of the firmament, which are above the seventh heaven. So, uh, we know the firmament is the sky. Eight, and I saw the ninth heaven, which is called in Hebrew, Kachavun. And I don't have a Hebrew tongue, so I'm pronouncing these words as best I can. Where are the heavenly homes of the 12 constellations of the circle of the firmament? So uh, I don't know any difference in that except for uh, one is where the work is being done in seven and in, I'm sorry, in eighth heaven. And then in ninth heaven is the homes for where the work is being done. So uh, that's the best I can get out of that. So uh, I'm just going to show you the. <clears throat> I'm going to show you the constellations of the stars. I have shown you that Enoch is a man of God. He's not very much mentioned in the Bible, but I believe he wrote 335 or books of his own on his own. So you can go check Enoch out in your own time. It's a good read. I enjoy it every time I do. So now I'm just going to let you check out this. Uh, um Supposedly, they say that this is an event that happens every 11 years. What you're going to see is the star of Jupiter going into the womb of Virgo. That does happen every 11 years. It's not rare. We know the moon's at her feet. So now, what you just saw was the star Jupiter entering the womb of Virgo, which is uh, the replica of the Virgin Mary. And the star Jupiter, which we call it a planet, but they're all stars, is a replica of the baby Jesus. 
So now what I'm getting ready to show you is to start exiting the womb nine months later. On September 23rd, 2017. Wow, that's amazing. Now, uh, the people who uh, I, I got the footage from, they're saying that uh, this year, 2017, was the first time that the stars lined up uh, as John spoke of in his vision. And so I'm just going to read from Revelations 12 uh, just to confirm that vision that we saw. I just want to make a point that John saw this vision in heaven. So he was looking at the stars in this vision. So now, <clears throat> and there appeared a great wonder in the heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. And upon her head was a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. So uh, the stars tell a story. Now uh, you can go and look at the video if you like. Uh, who was that? That what will happen Christmas 2017 by prophetic warning. That's the that's the group that did it. Prophetic warning. And uh you can see the whole thing. <clears throat> they show the red uh dragon coming down to to grab the baby. You show the whole act in the stars. And you know, they're saying that something's gonna happen tomorrow or today by the time I get the video loaded up. <clears throat> and uh, that's what they're prophesying. But my thing is this. If she gives birth on September 23rd and the stars are telling a story, then whose birthday are we celebrating on December the 25th? That's my big question. I just don't understand what we're doing now. It's a lot of feasts and things uh, that I spoke of in the Bible. <clears throat> One being uh, the Feast of the Lord. I got these feasts from Leviticus 23. I'm not going to read what all uh, goes on during these feasts, but I am going to read a few of the feasts to you. All of them. So now, we have the Feast of the Lord, the Sabbath, the Passover, and Unleavened Bread, the Feast of First Fruits, the Feast of Weeks, the Feast of Trumpets, the Day of Atonement, and the, Fe the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, so now, if we really supposed to be doing things for the Lord, how come we're not? How to come we're not doing these feasts? These are orders. These are things that are in the Bible and things that we are supposed to be doing. This day that we celebrate <clears throat> is a day of merchandising. It's the day of uh, about the whore. That rides the beast back. Okay. And I'm just going to read to you. Uh, about her. And what she controls. Briefly. So that you understand that this is a day of merchandising. It's only about. We're supporting the merchants. Okay. So now let me see. Let me go to. 
18. I'm going to go to 17, 3 and 4 first. Okay. Revelation 17, 3 and 4 first. Okay. So now. So John is saying that the angel carried him up in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast. Full of names of blasphemy. Having seven heads and seven horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Having a golden cup in her hand. Full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. So I want to compare her to the Babylon falling. So I'm going to go to 18 and 16 because they give the exact same description of her. So then it says, And saying, Alas, at last, that great city, that's Babylon, that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour, so great riches is come to naught. So they're celebrating or they're sad and mourning. I'm going to go up here to the top and tell you what the merchant is all responsible for. I'm going to go to, let's see, we're going to go Revelations 18, and 10, I'll start there. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, at last, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her. For no man buyeth her merchandise anymore. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet. And all thine wood and all thy manner vessels of ivory and all manner vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and adores and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men. This is what we're supporting. And the fruits that they thy soul lusted after are departed from thee and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee and thou shalt find them no more at all the merchants of these things which may rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment weeping and wailing and saying, at last, at last, that great city that was clothed. And I read that verse to you already. So Babylon. We're supporting Babylon when we support these traditions and these holidays that have nothing to do with the Lord. But yet there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight feast that are requested in the Bible that we do not celebrate. So now, <clears throat> I just like to leave you with those thoughts and we have to wake up people. We have to realize that uh, Satan is a great deceiver. And he's fooled us all. 
and that we're not really living for God and that this isn't even his birthday. And that's another thing. Celebrating his birthday is uh, anybody's birthday. I have not seen mention of birthdays in the Bible. But yet I have ran across these eight feasts that consist of rest and uh, sacrifice, no work. No work is to be done on these days. And the adversary is all about work. Let's get this work done. Let's get this done. Well, no time to rest. Well, that's all I have for tonight. I want to thank you all for watching my video. I hope you got something out of it. And I hope we're still friends. Thank you. Good night.